Hello, this is Walter Leite, and in this video, I'll show you how to do marginal mean weight in true stratification, which is a type of propensity score method to estimate the effect of having at least one full time security guard in schools on the frequency of harsh punishment of students. Um, we will use the school level data um, from the school survey on crime and safety. We'll start loading the data sets. Here I have two data sets. One is the data with propensity scores already estimated, so I loaded it, uh, and also has in the same object uh, a list of covariates that we are controlling for. So um, this data set here, it has um, all the covariates we are interested and also um, I have the covariate names if we type covariate names so these are the variables we are trying to account for in the analysis um, I also will load a data set that has the strata uh, the propensity scores at the strata were already calculated. I show in a previous video how to cut the distribution of propensity scores into strata. So in this data set, data dot certification, I already have propensity scores here, a uh, tree to which is a tree indicator, and I have a variable subclass which goes from one to five indicating the strata membership so the first thing we need to do to calculate the marginal mean weights uh, through certification is obtain the counts of individuals per treatment group and strata uh, combination so here strata is called subclass so i'm using the functions x tabs to get the counts by treatment subclass. Um, so I will run this. Gives me a table. And I will, this is my table, treatment and subclass, and here I have frequencies. Um, so this is, for example, for a treat, the strato one, the untreated group has 789 individuals, treatment group has 104 individuals. Um, and I renamed the frequency NZS um, here to help keeping things organized. And then I get a table that's printed here. The next step, is to obtain marginal frequencies for the strata. So I want to use the x-tabs function again, but now I want to just frequency by subclass. So we'll run that, and I will name that column n.s. Any meaning is, is the sample size dot s means by strata right here. So that's my marginal table by strata. Now I will merge the two tables, the one that has the counts by treatment and subclass with the one that has the marginal counts just by subclass. Um, they have common name, which is subclass, so they'll be able to merge. So I merge, and now I have a, a table of both the cell size and the margin, which is treatment by subclass and the subclass size. Um, now, to calculate the weight, first I will use the survey package. So I'll load the survey package with library survey and define a survey design, which allows us to analyze properly the data from the school survey on crime and safety because that survey is from a complex 
um, survey design that has a strata. So and the strata there is a strata, not the same as propensity score strata. It's the strata that we used in, in the stratified sampling used to obtain the, the original data. Okay, so survey design, I declare using the SVY design function that IDs are zero, IDs are cluster IDs, so there are no cluster IDs in this study. The strata variable is called just strata. The sampling weights used in this study are the final weight. The data is called data stratification. Um, So now I have an object here called survey design. Now I need the proportion treated from the survey design. So I'm using the function survey mean, which will give me the weighted uh, proportion treated coming from the sampling weights in this study. So here we have in this study 0 0.81 is the proportion treated and 0.18 is the proportion treated. Okay, point eight is the proportion not treated. Um, and we use that proportion as a variable in our table, the table with the counts. So we'll call, create a variable called pr.z in the data frame so we class by treat and we'll say if the individual if the group is treated then it will be assigned the proportional treated which is this if the group is not treated it will be assigned the proportion untreated which is this okay, so um run this line Now we can, if we look at subclass by treat, you notice that now I added the variable PRZ, which is the either the proportional treated or proportional treated. Now these are all the, these three columns is what we need for the formula for the weight, uh, for marginal mean weighted risk stratification to estimate the ATT, the ATE. Um, so I am going to create a variable called MMWS ATE um, within subclass by treat. And the formula for the weight is NS, N dot S times PR dot Z divided by N dot ZS, which means it's the, is the, number treated or untreated in the stratum times the proportion treated or not treated divided by the actual proportion treated and not, and not treated in that stratum. So the, 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 the top here are marginal uh, counts or a proportion where the bottom denominator is the marginal count. Okay, so running these, we actually we get a table that now has the marginal mean weight to certification to estimate 80. So these, the last column here are the weights. Now finally, I will merge that table with weights with the data set, so I use the function merge. Um, my whole data set is called data certification, and I'm merging just uh, columns. The subclass, treat, and I'm using, and the weights, I'm, I'm not using the middle results here. Okay, so. On this column and and I will check it by getting the weights by subclass for that data set and you can see here it shows the weights for each subclass 
how many people were assigned that weight. Now, this data set, the original data set has sampling weight, so I need to combine the marginal mean weight with the sampling weight, and that's done by calculating a product. So I first take the product of the MMWS ATE and the final weight, and that I assign to the variable MMWS ATE final. And then I normalize that weight by dividing of the mean of the weight and normalization makes the the weight sum to the sample size okay now the next step is to evaluate covariate balance so here i am going to use the twig package r and for the twig package, I need the treatment variable to be numeric. So the first thing I do is create a variable treat2 that is just recoding the original treat variable into 0 or 1, as you can see here. So I'll run this. And, and I, I will use the, the function bow.stat to obtain a balance table um, to estimate the ATE. And here within it, WL, I, I declare the final weights and I also declare what the original sampling weight was. Um, so I will run this balance table and the balance table is large, so I will just take a piece of it called results, columns one to five, which is what I'm most interested in. So I will show you those five variables. So for each, here I have the covariates with categories, if they're categorical covariates. I have me of the treated, standard deviation of the treated, me of the control, standard deviation of the control, and the standardized effect size. So adequate covariate balance is based on the last column, standardized effect size. So we want that standardized effect size to be less than 0.1, uh, or a less conservative criteria would be 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Uh, so here, um, I'm going to calculate another convert balance um, index called the various ratio, which is the, the ratio of the various of the treatment and various of the control. So now I hear if I click on balance table, I have the variance ratio true, which should be, um, it should be between 0.5 and 1.5. or another criteria is between 0 0.8 or 1.2, which is a more um, strict criteria. So over here, I will check which covariates are not balanced. So I'm using here, standardized effect size should be, the absolute value of standardized effect size should be less than 0 0.1, and the various ratio should be between 0 0.8 and 1.2. So, running this and I get a list of covariates. So let's see what we have. And we had, for that criteria of 0.1, we had these covariates that didn't meet the criteria. For the various ratio, we had this one here, these covariates. Um, I can also create a summary of the balance just with the summary function, which shows here that so does affect the size went between minus 0 0.27 and 0 0.18, which is pretty good. And the variance ratio went between 0 0.6 and 1.54. Um, and I can do that for all the strata individually if I want to. Now, after covariate balance, 
is evaluated if I'm satisfied, I'll go for the next step, which is estimating the treatment effect. So with the survey design package again, um, I have to define the survey design again because now I have a different weight. So my weight now is the MMNWS80 final. So I will run first defining the survey. And if I want bootstrapping, I will have to also run the function as ISV wrap design uh, to modify my design to one where some of the errors will be estimated with bootstrap. So here I say type equals bootstrap and say that I want a thousand replicates. Um, I will reduce to 100 here just so this runs a bit faster, but a thousand is better. Um, so I ran it. And then um, to estimate the ATE, I will use weighted regression, so I will use the, the function SVY GLM, and the model is percent, percent harsh, which is percent of harsh uh, punishment, uh, as the outcome, and treat, which is the treatment indicator, as the predictor. And I'm using the survey design ATE, which is set up to use the correct weights uh, and bootstrapping. Um, so um, here I'm using linear regression, which gives me a ATE of 0 0.019, and uh, it's not statistically significant. Now I could also try a, a logistic regression for the proportion with a quasi-binomial family. Um, this is a generalized linear model and gives me a treatment effect of 0 0.1582. That's also not statistically significant. So the two, these are two alternative models uh, to obtain the, the AT using the marginal mean weight um, through certification. 